Located at the top of Wisconsin, Bayfield County is considered by many of the locals to be the wild side of the dairy state. This is a place of majestic beauty with national treasures that include the Apostle Islands, the natural wonders of its sea caves, and rugged sandstone cliffs that frame the clear waters of Lake Superior. This is Bayfield County Wild. Welcome to Bayfield County Wild. I'm Nancy Christopher, along with Mary Motif, Director of Bayfield County Tourism. Hi, Mary. Hello, Nancy. What a spectacular time of year in Bayfield County. Yes, we are just in in full gear here, enjoying the outdoors in Bayfield County. Well, and you've told me one of the best ways to explore the area is to drive the Wisconsin Lake Superior Scenic Byway. What are some of the features of this byway? So first, let me tell you a little bit about what makes a byway a byway. This stretch of Highway 13, it's a state highway. It's 70 miles long up and around the Bayfield Peninsula. And the, the way that it became a byway is by showing all, not just the beauty of the, ro- the road itself and what you can see from the road, but because of the natural, cultural, historical, geographical beauty that surrounds it. And so it's not just the road itself, and and you'll be missing out if you just drive the road and think you've experienced the byway. Exactly. You have to really stop along the way and get out and explore and and see what makes that uh, Lake Superior Scenic Byway. And actually, there are now kiosks in each community along the byway that have been built that have a map and then they have the the guide which is a brochure along with other information at each of the kiosks all along the way so you can really take your time i would allow for um, as much time as you can really because you could literally stay up here for a week and not see everything right well and mary i wanted to ask you because you all did make the national news you had a little bit of rain recently, and is there any problem with driving the roads up there? We did. We had another flood event, and it has been um, challenging, especially for those communities that were most affected. Those communities mostly were in the central to southern part of the county, although there there is one road closure up in the northern part of the county, just south of Port Wing on a county road. But in general, the entire scenic byway is intact and fine. The challenge is just making sure that you look ahead of time at any road closures that will affect your trip on the way to or from the area. And we do have a map and other information that everyone should just check before they head this way. And it's bayfieldcounty.org slash flood. And that's going to give you links to an interactive map that really shows the detailed closures in the area, as well as a map for folks who are coming to the area of what roads are open and what reroutes there may be. There is one fairly major reroute on U.S. Highway 2, although it is just a reroute on a county road that goes around it. So it doesn't add a ton of extra time unless you're a truck driver. So if you're, as long as you're just in your personal vehicle, you should be good. And so everybody knows Bayfield County is definitely open for visitors. That is for sure. Okay, so getting back to the byway, I understand you'll find the largest collection of lighthouses in North America up there. You know, isn't it unbelievable all the incredible things we have up here? It's true. (laughs) Really? We we do have the largest collection of lighthouses in North America here with the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. And so anyone who loves to visit lighthouses should make a trip here. And there are some cruises that take you out specifically to an island with a lighthouse where you can get a tour inside the lighthouse go up the tower. The views are incredible when you get up to the top. And it's just such great history to experience. Um, So again, I highly recommend folks who uh, can appreciate lighthouses to come and make the trip. What are some of the geographical, historical, and cultural diversity you can experience? You know, it's varied. You know, we have, of course, the the Red Cliff tribe of Lake Superior Chippewa that have made their home here and were the first to make their home here. Um, so the Red Cliff Reservation is just three miles north of Bayfield, and that is probably the the deepest cultural experience that you can have is uh, going and experiencing um, Frog Bay Tribal National Park, heading up to the the campgrounds, the resort, Legendary Waters Resort and Casino up in Redcliffe, and really get a feel for the the culture and history of the area in that way. There are many opportunities to find out all about the cultural diversity in the area by going to places like the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center, 
where there are not only um, exhibits, and some of them are interactive, but also archives. There's historical archives there. Another way is at the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, their primary headquarters as a visitor center, and they also show some movies about the islands, which are really great. It's like a short, maybe 10 or 12 minute movie that really gives you a great history of the islands in particular. And then also they are building a new visitor center up at Little Sand Bay. And so because we have so many of these federal agencies up here, because we have such Uh, a huge amount of of federal land, whether it be the National Forest or the Park Service or the Fish and Wildlife Service. We have lots of resources and interpretive opportunities for people to learn about the area. One other amazing thing that we have along the scenic byway is the Big Top Chautauqua. And that is a, a huge part of the history and culture of the area because their house shows have been developed based on the history and culture of the area. And then the shows themselves are part of our current local culture. We have so many incredible artists up here, and that includes, you know, singers and actors as well. And the shows that they put on are just incredible. They tell a story, they entertain, they have these visual graphics on a big screen up on the stage. And that's really such a phenomenal way to get a feel for the culture and history of the area is by enjoying a a house show at the Big Top. You know, Mary, we should also mention that we talked a lot about the Big Top in one of our previous episodes. So if people want to learn more, they should probably listen to that episode. And I did also want to add that there's a lot of homegrown deliciousness in Bayfield County. So when we come back, we're going to visit with Fred Erickson, the third generation owner of one of the area's oldest and largest apple orchards and berry farms. We hope you'll stay with us. Established in 1935, Morty's Pub is a warm and welcoming old-fashioned pub located in the heart of downtown Bayfield, just one block from the waterfront. The house specialty is Lake Superior Whitefish, caught fresh daily in the Big Lake, along with delicious burgers that are also fresh, never frozen, and cheese curds made with real Wisconsin cheese. You must try the deep-fried Twinkies and Pickles, paired with a cold one from Morty's large selection of craft, imported, and domestic beers. This is a place where locals and visitors alike come for great food and drinks, but stay for the fun, playing pinball, classic video games, pool, board games, and cards, while listening to tunes from the jukebox. Meet me at Morty's is a familiar saying around town. Open daily, you can learn more about Morty's at mortyspub.com and on Facebook. Birch Grove Campground is a family favorite with 16 campsites nestled between East Twin Lake and West Twin Lake in Washburn, Wisconsin. Each campsite has a parking spot, fire ring, picnic table, tent pad, and can accommodate RVs up to 35 feet. There's also drinking water, vault toilets, a fishing pier, small picnic area, and an interpretive trail, which can be used for horse riding, hunting, mountain biking, and hiking. Each lake has a small boat access and is stocked with bass, pan fish and northern pike. For more information and directions, call 715-373-2667. Mary and I are back with Fred Erickson, owner of a truly family-run operation called Erickson Orchards. It's great to have you with us today, Fred. Well, thank you. Now, I understand your grandparents, Martin and Christine Erickson, planted the first apple tree right around the turn of the 20th century, correct? Correct. The farm was started in 1910. Wow. So give us an idea of what all your family does on the farm. Well, it's a really a family effort, which is kind of a unique situation we have. You don't usually see the family farms staying together anymore. I have my sisters working there now, and my mother just retired at 87 this year. Wow. And my father is still working, actually, at 88. That's incredible. Well, that's good farm living, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't stop Jimmy. No. No, uh, no. So how many varieties of fruits are grown at your farm? Uh, we have approximately 14 to 16 different apple varieties, plums. I just dabbled a little bit in peaches, strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. Yummy. And then we do our own apple cider. We have our own processing plant that we produce in an excess of twelve to 14,000 gallons a year. And you also do a lot of baking as well. Our bakery is renowned. We're very famous for our apple cider donuts that my mother 
That's my mother's creation, Muriel. That's her baby. You have had three generations working on the farm. A fourth generation is waiting in the wings with your son, Jeremy. What has each generation brought to the farm? The technology from my great-grandfather, what he started with, machinery, they were using horse and wagons. And to probably in the 40s, they turned to tractors. And then my father took over and he developed and planted more apple trees and strawberry grew bigger strawberry patches. Uh, And then my turn came in. Uh, I took over six years ago, which uh, I've done a lot more. Uh, Technology is great. Uh, How to grow things differently, how to get the maximum yields out of your production. It's it's been good. And you think Jeremy will be working on the farm soon? I think Jeremy has got a little ways let yet to go. I figure I have enough in me. I can I can hold hold my own for a while. He's right now he's a federal wildland firefighter. He's a captain, so I'm he's doing his thing for right now and he when he gets home he helps. He told me to go high tech dad. <laughs> so that's what you're doing. So you have one of the oldest and largest apple and berry farms up in Bayfield County. I bet that's a big responsibility. It is. You know, just to try to continue on, you know, that, that family name, which is kind of cool because we're known, if you mention Erickson Orchards, it's it reaches Minneapolis, uh, Milwaukee, in that whole area, this whole region. Uh, they know where Erickson Orchards is. and. We take a lot of pride. That wasn't always the case. You have several festivals that you do during the growing season. One is coming up really soon. That's the Strawberry Festival. And then there's the pre-apple harvest and the apple festival in the fall. These are all very popular events. But my understanding is it took a flat tire to come up with the idea for the very first festival in 1963. That's correct. (laughs) My dad was actually shipping apples all the way to North Dakota. And he got a flat tire up at Duluth, which is only 100 miles away from here, hour and a half from here. And people came gathering around and asking, where did these apples come? They all thought they came from Michigan. And he said, no, we grow them right in Bayfield. And he came up with the, he came back from his trip and he got with the Chamber of Commerce and he was a member and he decided, well, why are we going all this way when we can do it here? So they came up with the first Bayfield Apple Fest. USA Today once said your Apple Festival was among the 10 best fall harvest festivals in the country. Why do you think that is? What goes on at your Apple Festival that makes it so popular? I think it's a generational thing. I have families that come to the farm that are third and fourth generation families from northern Minnesota to father's part of Wisconsin, uh, Minneapolis. And I think it's just a draw. It's an annual get-together that people really look forward to every year when you you stuff a little town with 60 plus thousand people uh <laughs> it's quite an annual it's gathering. a wild time right yeah it well, is and th- it that's is. something i wanted to point out that really is a true community-wide event the the entire community participates in apple festival Jim was the originator of the idea, uh, you know, to start getting people to come here for the apples instead of, you know, us having to take them elsewhere. And that idea has really caught on and grown. And the whole community, that's probably the biggest fundraiser for the community uh, that, that keeps everybody going through the winter. It's such a huge, huge festival. Wow, It's that's... the last hurrah. of the harvest season of the harvest season but there's a lot going on now the strawberry festival is coming up quickly yeah that's a relatively new event right um yeah i actually it dates back to the 1936 i have an actual wooden uh strawberry fest button and the strawberry fest was actually at that time drew in hundreds and thousands of people because we were renowned for our strawberries in this northern area. So just two years ago, I was out pruning my apple trees in the middle of the winter. (laughs) I come up (laughs) with these ideas and I said, you know, why don't we try the strawberry fest again? And uh, threw it at the wall, see how it'd stick. And uh, it was kind of a shocker. I had between twelve and 1,500 people show up. When is it this year? Uh, 6th, 7th, and 8th 
and July. It's right after the 4th, so they're looking for things to do. Do you have, like, the Strawberry Queen and different types of events that no, go on? No, I haven't come to that point yet. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, we have food booths, and we have some vendors, artisans, and uh, live music, and anything that has anything to do with strawberries as far as to eat, we have. Now, you say strawberries are kind of a high-maintenance operation. Is it a good year for berries this year? With the winter that we had up here this year, we had I had four and a half, five feet of snow, and it went from winter to summer. We didn't really have a f- spring. You were really going to town trying to keep, catch up. But the berries, they're plentiful and they're good, right? Oh, yeah. They're plentiful. <laughs> I, there's a plentiful crop. We Yesterday, uh, we picked our first picking commercially, and I was actually surprised that uh, I ended up with 50 plus eight quart crates. Normally on your first picking, you end up with maybe eight or 10, but this year it was surprising, pleasantly surprising. Bountiful. So things are a little earlier this year, right? Yeah. We're a week ahead actually than last year. And you wouldn't think it with the winter we had, Mary, right? And right, and but we'll still have berries well through that Fourth of July weekend, right? Oh yeah, definitely. That that's when we'll start getting to the peak. There's a lot of green. I plant four different varieties, so they this is a little earlier variety. I experiment with a lot of different varieties up here. I don't stick with the same old, same old. I I'm kind of one of those people that like to find out what will grow here the best, and I'll throw a couple thousand plants and see how they do. <laughs> you know, you if you want an insider's secret, Nancy. Yes. What we like to do is go and pick as many strawberries as you can and then freeze them and then you get to enjoy local strawberries all year long in your smoothies or however you like to enjoy them in your in your oatmeal in your strawberry Uh, daiquiris yes and you can think of bayfield fondly all year long (laughs) we and we provide that also because we package up and sell frozen strawberries throughout the year. Well, there's always something going on at the Erickson Orchard Farm. I, I can tell that. Where can people go to learn more? Oh, uh, you can go to our webpage, which is ericksonorchards.com. You'll find us there. We also you can Facebook us or Google it. All right. Well, thanks, Fred. I hope Wait, we ha- before we let Fred go, oh, sure. um, something I don't think you talked about at all, Fred, was the adorable little shop you have up there. And it's it's one oh. of the It's one of the most fun places to come and visit just because, you know, you walk in. First of all, there's a separate antique shop. And then when you walk into the main shop, not only do do you have so many great items there of all different kinds, but then that's where you can watch the apple cider donuts being made. And then you walk towards the back and then you see the little bakery area. And then in the far back is where the apple sorting happens. So it's just a really fantastic experience. I just would highly recommend getting up to the orchard. Yeah, we. We do all our own jams and jellies, and they're fantastic. We're known for that. Uh, they We do ship. With our cider uh, mill, we have been hooked up with more of the wineries and uh, distilleries. And we last year was my first year doing our hard cider, Erickson hard cider. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you have a amazing harvest this year, Fred. Thanks for joining us. And Mary, I mentioned earlier that these festivals at Erickson Orchards are extremely popular. Any recommendations for lodging? Well, the good part about that is we have so many different options for lodging that I couldn't even begin to start naming them all. But you can easily find them either at bayfield.org, which is the Bayfield Chamber of Commerce site, They actually have an online lodging availability search where you can just type in the type of place you're looking for or check off which type of place you're looking for, how many people, what are the dates, and it will pull up a list of lodging that has availability, which is just a fantastic tool for people to use when they're coming to the Bayfield area. We also have all the lodging throughout the whole county on our website, which is travelbayfieldcounty.com. All right. Thanks so much. And when we come back, Mary's going to talk about some of the other special events and attractions in July and give us a preview of what to expect in August. So don't go away. 
Forget something or have some last-minute shopping to do while staying in Bayfield County? No worries. Check out Jim's Bait Shop and Convenience Store in Barnes, Wisconsin. It's definitely not all bait and tackle. You'll find just about anything you need, including local news, recommendations, ice cream, and a friendly, helpful staff. Got a question? Call 715-795-3150 or get the latest updates on their Facebook page, Jim's Bait of Barnes, Wisconsin. Telemark Vacation Condominiums is a year-round Northwoods adventure destination and playground, offering comfortable, spacious, and affordable accommodations and timeshare opportunities. You can enjoy the wooded peace and tranquility of one of the Christiana Villa condominiums or the lakeside splendor of the Telemark Point condominiums. Some of the units are even dog-friendly. The condos can accommodate two to six guests and are equipped with full kitchens, a dining area, and living room. There's tons of adventure nearby with incredible mountain biking and road biking, ATVing, paddling the Namakagan River, River, fishing, golf, and hiking during the summer months, and cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, and snowmobiling in the winter. And at the end of the day, you can relax with your favorite beverage and enjoy fine dining at the many restaurants and pubs in the area. For more information, call 715-798-3999 or go to telemarkcondos.com. Welcome back to Bayfield County Wild. Mary, July kicks off with an international sailing race. It's pretty exciting. You know, it is. And that's one of the things that we're known for um, with the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore up here. It really is truly a world-class sailing destination. It has been that for decades. And this is a really fun place for people to sail. And it, it is an exciting race, even if you just enjoy um watching sailboats it's it's really fun to see all of the sailboats that are out there zooming around i love the beauty of the sails they are beautiful it's just relaxing watching well and of course the beginning of july is also our nation's birthday the fourth of july what's the best way to find any festivities and fireworks going on there so there's lots of fun activities going around for the fourth we have all of it summarized that we know of at least on our website at um, travelbayfieldcounty.com and then we have a special page called seasonal fun. So just on the menu, when you get to travelbayfieldcounty.com, you click on seasonal fun. It takes you right to the 4th of July festivities around the area. And I love the name of this event, the Camba Long Ass Ride. (laughs) That's really funny. How long is it? And I think they have a donkey as the symbol, you know, on the poster. (laughs) So yeah, trying to pull that version of the word in. You know, we have so many great mountain biking trails that I was really glad to see this event. This is a relatively new event that started a couple years ago. And I want to say for mountain biking, it is pretty darn long. It's like 45 miles, I want to say. Oh, yeah, that is a long way. Oh, I guess there are some different mileages. So 16, 35 or 45. So the 45 is pretty darn long. Uh, That's funny, (laughs) though. Uh, (laughs) And then, of course, the blueberries are ripe and ready for harvest towards the end of July. And there's lots of events dedicated to all things blue and berry. There is a festival for that, too. That's right. There's the Iron (laughs) River Blueberry Festival that takes place towards the end of July. And there you will find everything blueberry. You know, it's funny because the Blueberry Festival is celebrating blueberries. There aren't a lot of blueberry farmers in Iron River, like there are a lot of berry farmers up in Bayfield. But in the Iron River area, there are a lot of wild blueberries that grow throughout the national forest. And so that's kind of a a fun adventure if you've never gone out hunting for wild blueberries. And and they do taste different. And, you know, they're smaller. But they're safe, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, And you can um, go out and collect blueberries. You don't need a permit to do that if it's for your own use. You can just go out and collect blueberries. I did it with my daughter for the first time when we were driving back from somewhere. We decided just to pull over on the side of one of the forest roads and we went hiking around and found all sorts of blueberries. It was great. You know, when we talked about festivals earlier. I mean, Wisconsin makes a festival out of everything. So, of course, there's a blueberry festival, right? Right. Of course. Well, <laughs> it's another great way to enjoy uh, these delectable goodies that we have all over the place. And anything else you want to tell us about? There are so many events going on in July. So let me just list off a few of the big ones that happen annually. We kick off with the Strawberry Festival, and then the annual Red Cliff Pow Wow happens uh, right around the 4th of July also. And if you've never been to a Pow Wow, I highly recommend that you come and experience it because it's really, really cool. There's the Vatten Paddler Canoe and Kayak Race down in the Barnes area. Port Wing celebrates Lake Superior Day with a celebration on July 21st. There's the Bayfield Festival of Arts and Gallery Tour, which is a really awesome event with lots of incredible artists that bring their work to the lakeshore up in Bayfield. And um, that's a really great festival. Washburn's Brownstone Block Party, which used to be called 
Brownstone Summerfest, but they're trying to capture this feeling that happens in town of it's really like a community wide block party. It's a lot of fun. And that's Washburn's uh, one of their signature events that happens every year. Every five years, it's actually the big homecoming when everyone who has a connection to Washburn comes back and it's the really big deal. So that's on the fives and the zeros. Uh, This year, it's the block party, which will still be lots of fun, just not quite as huge. And then that's actually when Washburn does their fireworks is during their brownstone block party. So that's really fun to come and have another opportunity to enjoy the lakefront with fireworks. And then, of course, we talked a little bit about Blueberry Festival in Iron River. There's new concert series happening up in Cornucopia, plus all the other ones that are continuing to go on down at the Rookery Pub in Cable and up in Bayfield on Tuesday evenings. And then don't forget about all the other great things that just happen, even though they're not events that you can come and do. Get out on the water with a cruise or a boat ride or a kayaking adventure. Go hiking on one of our trails. And we have 38 of them. So lots of lots of fun to be had in, in July. There really is. And to get all the details, what's the best place to look? That would be TravelBayfieldCounty.com. And we have a community calendar right on that page that will give you the details of all of these events that I talked about and a lot more. Fantastic. So before we sign off, Mary, what are we going to talk about next month? Next month, we are talking about Lakeside Resorts. All right. We'll look forward to that. All right. Very good. And everyone listening, if you like what you've heard, we'd love to have you share, review, and subscribe to Bayfield County Wild. On behalf of Mary and myself, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.